Welcome back to my build diary for my Coke bottle steam engine. In this episode I'm going to make the piston and the valve slide. Uh, this piston is supposed to be made from 2132nd brass which would have come in the kit but my kit is second hand and old and bits were lost. So I'm using bronze instead because I have some from earlier in the project because you have to buy it in six inch lengths or one foot lengths I think. And it's the right diameter and bronze is actually better for steam engines than brass anyway where the steam hits it because brass can de-zincify I think. Anyway, what we're doing here is setting my zeros for my Z and X axis on the primary tool and then the other tool we're going to use is this grooving tool which I have carved up. It's about 43 thou wide so I want to get an X for that. Now we turn to the final outside diameter and we're a little bit tight which is good and then when I turn the barrel around the other way we are not so tight so I have a conical barrel or at least it's tight at one end and after the escapades with that barrel earlier it's not surprising so I'm going to leave it at that and work those issues by hand I'm zeroing off the grooving tool and I'm going to step that down to the position of the first groove. I'm actually making the piston slightly thin because my barrel is slightly short because of the previous adventures with the barrel. So it is about 15 thou undersize and there's very limited clearance for the piston in the barrel between the two ends. Uh, with the crank throw, so that's what I'm going to do is make the piston a little bit shorter. And I'm using feeler gauges here to see how wide my groove is, uh, and it seems to be about 43 thou, so it needs to come out another 7 thou. So I step it down 7 thou and go in another cut. And when I measure it, it's not 50 thou, so I think this tool is not liking making a very narrow cut at the side of a groove, it's it's uh, deflecting slightly. But no matter, I just make multiple passes moving it down a couple of thou each time until the desired effect is obtained. And then I repeat with the other groove. If you're enjoying this build diary, please like and subscribe and give me your feedback in the comments below. Off camera, once this is uh, removed, I adjust the barrel diameter with engineering blue and scraping to uh, just take off the high spots until the piston moves freely in the barrel. It took a lot of time and there was no camera of that. Here I have my groove to 50 thou and I move on and do the second groove. For the hole in the middle, we do the center drill. I seem to only have this tiny center drill and then two sizes up. Uh, and then we drill the hole and then it needs a counter bore for the nut. And I don't have a counter bore the right size, so I'm starting with an eighth inch end mill, going up to a quarter inch end mill, which is big enough for the nut, and then fill it, finishing off part way down with a drill of the right diameter to give clearance for whatever is going to turn the nut and that, that should work and then part the uh, part the part and I'm quite happy with the way this uh, piston came out I didn't make any major errors just took my time carefully and uh, made it work
for the valve I have already sanded off the back which is the working surface of the valve on the surface plate and here I'm just taking off the casting uh, sprue. The other side has been filed so I've got it pretty square and it's in the vise here and then I'm going to take in and take my zero which I forgot on the previous pass. Then I take it out and measure it, figure out how much I have to take off and I'm going to take off the same amount on both sides and turn it round as I go and take off the other sides as well. I want this to be pretty square but it's not really critical. These outside faces are really for clearance and you want the casting pretty much centered. Uh, you want the opposite sides parallel um, and that's what we achieve with this uh, operation. Now I'm facing off the outside face here, the top face. This is not a working surface, but I do want it parallel to the other side because I'm going to be putting on parallels when I flip it over to machine. And here, this is supposed to be a 1 8 slot. I'm using a 1 8 end mill. But I have a little bit of run out, so it's actually coming out a little bit oversized. I don't think that's critical. But in retrospect, I should have used my 332nd and worked out to the right width. For the cross slot, it is wider. So I'm going in with the eighth and then I'm going to measure the width that I get. It comes out about four thou oversize. And then I move it out to either side to get to the final width. That last part was done off camera. And that's where the only error happened. I managed to break an end mill by... Uh, zeroing the mill without zeroing Z before X and Y and I crashed the mill into the part. Uh, here I'm using the dial indicator to find the X center uh, because it's just too much of a pain to mount the wiggler in this position. I would have had to uh, take off the four inch extension, take out the mill and cutter, lower the speed to something sensible because we're running at 3000 rpm and the wiggler doesn't like that and then reverse the whole process after i was done so easier to use the dial indicator in this case and it's just held on with the mag base to the four inch uh, morse extension this milling operation is depth sensitive so taking my setting my depth with my brand new baby broken end mill and then plunging to depth, which I think is only a 32nd of an inch. It's very tiny cavity here. No, I think it's a 16th of an inch. And then we're just making this out to a little square, which has a 16th inch radius, which is an 8th inch cutter will give you a 16th inch radius. And that's all there is to the valve. So here's our two parts. The valve goes in like that, slides back and forth. And the piston goes in, let's see, it goes in this way up. And we've got a nice sliding fit all the way through. As long as it's straight, it will drop all the way through. And it's a good tight fit, or not tight, but good sliding fit, which is what we want. And the piston rings fit. Very small amount of gap there. It's what you want. And I'm not going to try and persuade those in because I need to read up on how to how to fit that, how to fettle it, may need to make the grooves a little bit deeper. Uh, they do measure good. They're both at 50 thou deep, so I'm on spec for the numbers. But there is a little, the piston rings themselves are actually 53 thou deep. So something has to squish and I need to figure out what. 
Thanks for watching my progress on my Coke Bottle steam engine. Uh, there is a playlist for the whole series which is ongoing and will eventually be finished. Uh, we're past all the hard parts I think except for one in the next video and then we'll be on to a bunch of little things and final assembly. Again, thanks for watching. Please uh, like and subscribe and leave your comments below in the comments, which is where the comments go.